Hi, as you can see from the title, I'm going to be talking about high power LEDs and constant current drivers. I'm making the video for my students as a few of you need to or want to use higher powered LEDs. Now, when I say higher powered LEDs, uh, you could in theory go to something like this, which is a 10 watt LED. Uh, don't advise it. They are uh, unbelievably bright, uh, probably not suitable for most student projects. The sort of LED that comes from uh, one of these okay so i would generally advise against that um go for something like a, a one watt led and let's see if i can just quickly find one of those as an example something like these things okay now these ones these ones actually come in uh they're listing two two different types here one watt and a three watt led okay now they are still going to be plenty plenty bright enough for student projects so, um, oh, by the way, um, the constant current drive that I'm going to talk about is going to use a voltage regulator. The alternative, uh, well, there are many alternatives, but there is another alternative. Uh, that if you're one of my students, we actually have these as well. But these ones uh, they are quite expensive, probably about seven or eight pounds each. And they're only suitable for the, or mostly really suitable for the higher power, like the, the 10 watt LEDs. So that's uh, probably rules it out for my student projects. So um, all of you, if you're one of my students, are going to be familiar with using LEDs like that. Typical sort of five millimeter LED. So I'm going to use that uh, just to recap on some basic things, and then we we'll move on to uh, high power LEDs and constant current drivers. Okay. So first of all, then um, typical circuit for just a standard everyday LED. We've got current limiting resistor, the LED. We got the uh, supply voltage and then we go to ground. Now um, the LED, uh, if we check a data sheet, if we got a data sheet, is going to list the forward voltage. Uh, that's the voltage that's expected to be dropped across the LED. And that for say like a red LED is going to be something around about two volts. It might be 1.8, it might be 2.2, generally comes as range. Let's just go, let's just assume two volts. There's also a forward current. Now that same current goes through the LED and the current into resistor, of course. And that forward uh, current is generally specified on the data sheet as a maximum forward current. And um, there may also be a recommendation. Uh, if there's a maximum, like 20 milliamps, I would generally say just halve it. So let's assume we've checked on the data sheet and we found that 10 milliamps will be suitable. So if we were to look at the characteristics of this graph, we would see uh, current and voltage. We would see that at low voltages, less than two volts, we would have uh, very, very little current until we would get to the two volts. And then there's a very, very sudden and steep increase at about the two volts mark. You'll see that if we would push it up to like, you know, two and a half volts, three volts or whatever, well, we would have an extremely high current and the uh, LED would actually fail. Even if we go up like 2.1, 2.2, it's still going to be, give us uh, probably way too much current. So we try to hit that sweet spot of um, about 10 milliamps. And it might be in the range of like 2 volts to 2.2 or whatever it happens to be. Okay, now it's um, it's generally easier with a higher powered LED to actually regulate the current. So we've fixed the current at whatever the current rating is for the LED. And uh, if it's a basic, uh, like a five millimeter LED, like the one I showed you earlier, 10 milliamps, you could if you wanted. Uh, build a circuit, a constant current driver, which was going to provide a constant current of 10 milliamps, and then largely ignore the voltage that's actually needed. It's easier to actually regulate the voltage, uh, sorry, the current to the current that you want than it is to regulate the voltage because a very slight change in voltage is going to have a very large uh, change in current. Whereas if we say we're like 9.8, milliamps is not going to really make a lot of difference. Uh, it certainly won't destroy the LED. And if we were to go up to like um, 12 or whatever, it's still 12 is still not going to make a problem. So we normally aim for constant current rather than constant voltage. 
Now, um, there are various ways to do this, but we're going to use a, a voltage regulator. I'm going to show you how to do that. And um, before we do that, in fact, let's just have a quick look at the advert on eBay again, because I know that a lot of students like to buy stuff on eBay. I do myself, actually. But it's a very poor choice if you want um, reliable data sheets. I'll be honest with you there. But let's see what information they give us. Bearing in mind that they're advertising a choice of one watt or three watt LEDs, you have to look through this carefully. Uh, you'll see that that the lower, um, yeah, the lower range of voltages, V sub F, it should be, is 3.2 to 3.4 volts. In fact, I think we're probably uh, we'll note this down as well. Okay, so when we do some calculations later, we might use this. So V F. For, uh, let's go for a 1 watt LED, okay, because a 1 watt LED is probably the one that we would uh, find most suitable for most student projects. So the VF is going to be uh, 3.2 volts in the range of 3.2 volts to 3.4 volts. And uh, let's just remember <coughs> that's a bit of a problem because that's, that's quite a variation 3.2 to 3.4. Uh, on the other hand, they give the forward current. That's I think that's the forward current for the one watt, and then the three watt is 750. Okay, so the forward current is given as a single value rather than a range. So IF is uh, in this case 300 milliamps. So uh, if we were building a circuit, we would uh, we would want it to stay at 300 and substitute 300 there for 10. So we would want it to be at 300 milliamps. And then we'd want whatever the voltage was that was needed to um, to get that 300 milliamps uh, pushed through the LED. Um, you don't, and by the way, you don't ha actually have to drive it at 300 milliamps. If you want half that 150 milliamps, it's still going to be bright, it's just not going to be as bright. But then again, it would also uh, have. A, uh, hopefully, it would last longer as well. Okay, so. Um, so how are we going to do this? Well, I think I mentioned earlier that I would tend to uh, suggest for an easy, easy circuit to use a voltage regulator. So let's just push this out away for the moment. And uh, I've got various circuits here. Oops, sorry. Various circuits. And this circuit here, top left, uh, this uses a voltage regulator. It's an L7805 regulator. Now, 78 is the series and 05 is the output voltage. So uh, I would expect when we run this circuit that the on the input, well, I've chosen 15 volts, but it could be something else on the output. I would expect about five volts. And sure enough, 4.94 volts are very close to five volts. Um, now, by the way, uh, if you want five volts out, then you need to have at least two volts greater voltage uh, on the supply side. So for example, if you've got a five volt regulator, you'd need a supply of at least seven volts. You can get what we call low dropout voltage regulators, which would be uh, closer between input and output voltages if needed, but this is not a, a low dropout regulator. Another thing that's worthwhile noting is that uh, if you don't draw any current from the output, so let's just break that. Uh, they do a poor job of uh, regulation. So let's just have no current flowing now. And if we have a look, yeah, 5.48 significantly gone up because we need at least 5 milliamps drawn from the output for it to regulate its voltage. So don't fall into the trap of um, not having a load on your regulator. OK, now, so uh, what have we said there? We said that the output on this one is going to be 5 volts. So in other words, the, the uh, potential difference between this output wire and ground, because we're taking a measurement with reference or potential difference with uh, reference to ground, we said that's 5 volts. In other words, let's just move across to this circuit. And by the way, it doesn't have to power an LED. This is just as an example, makes it a little bit more visual. Uh, you'll see that, sure enough, 4.94, in other words, 5 volts, okay, is output uh, with respect to the ground pin or the reference pin. Some data sheets call this uh, middle pin ref, some call them ground, okay. Uh, if you check the data sheet, you'll also find some um, advisories on 
having an input capacitor and an output capacitor, it's always these values. It's for the majority of uh, student projects with me, uh, it's not going to make a lot of difference uh, if you include those, but you might like to include them. OK, so what we've done so far, we've just got a voltage regulator. OK, it's outputting a constant voltage. So uh, if we even change the input voltage, so let's change that to say 10 volts, it still still maintains the output voltage that's current, uh, that's um, constant. OK, called line regulation. So um, if we change the line voltage, we are not changing the uh, load voltage. And so if say I was even to change it down to whatever, 8 volts, uh, it still is OK. But if we were to go a little bit too close, like 6 volts, uh, then the output is dropping. OK, so do remember that we've got to have a minimum of 2 volts across there. Right, so uh, all this so far has been about voltage regulators, but that's not really what we want to do. We want to have a constant current driver. So uh, let's let's do some more stuff, okay? And it's not too difficult to do this. So we have our supply, and we've got our free terminal voltage regulator here. And then what I'm going to do is, well, just for the moment anyway, uh, just remember that from here to here, that's going to be the expected output voltage. Now, if say I use an L uh, seven eight O five regulator and I expect five volts of difference between there and that. But now I'm going to throw a bit of a spanner into the works and I'm going to add a resistor there. And I'm going to do that. Okay. So we've still got the input, we've got the output and we've got the uh, reference pin, uh, but we've connected the reference pin to the output via this resistor. Now do remember that the voltage here, we said previously that's going to be 5 volts difference. OK, um, but if you were to move that meter around, so go from there to there or there to there, or maybe even hopefully you see that that's actually measuring exactly the same voltage as from there to there. OK, and what do we say? Well, for a 5 volt regulator, that's going to be 5 volts. We'll give you a moment to think about that. Now, let's put, say, a load onto this. And it doesn't have to be an LED. Oh, hang on. I don't know why I did a resistor. Because actually, we're not going to need the resistor this time. Let's, let's have um, some LEDs. Or, yeah, some. Why not? Let's, let's have two in series. Never put them in parallel. If you want uh, more than one, uh, then have them in series. OK, so we got um, two LEDs there. And say, for example, that we wanted, say, 100 milliamps. OK, a bit of an arbitrary number there. But say, say we want 100 milliamps to go through uh, those two LEDs. That same 100 milliamps is the same current that's going to be going through that resistor. OK, and because we know the voltage that's going to be dropped across it, because remember, it's a voltage regulator, so it's going to regulate that to 5 volts. And we know the current that we want to go through it, then we can calculate the uh, resistance of that resistor. And so long as we choose the right value resistor and the 5 volts is maintained, then we are assured that the current will be 100 milliamps going through that. So shall we do some calculation then? So the resistance, just saying this law now, the resistance is going to be V over I, which we said is going to be 5 volts, 100 milliamps. So 100 times 10 to the minus 3, if you want to do it like that. Um, now let's just uh, get my calculator ready for you. Hopefully this is uh, clear. I used to use like the, you know, the actual one, but I think it's clear on screen. Comment if you prefer the other one for some reason. I don't imagine you would. But we've got 5 uh, over and then 100. 100 times 10 to the minus 3, so that's 100 uh, milliamps. Then it equals that. And 50, okay? So 
50 ohms. So that's now, uh, we say that that one is a 50 ohm resistor. And in fact, shall we just try that? I think I've got that in circuit. So we got um, a 50 ohm resistor. We're not worrying too much about the supply voltage at the moment. We just keep that high enough. I'll explain about that in a little bit. So I think I've built the circuit somewhere. There we go. Okay. Now, uh, on this particular one, it's 15 ohm resistor there. So let's just change that to uh, 50. It's a, uh, it's a 7805, so it's a 5 volt regulator, 15 volts input. And if I run this simulation, and we said 100 milliamps, notice there's next to no current going through there. Okay. So, yeah, more or less 100 milliamps, 94.23 milliamps. That's pretty good for me. Right, so um, we made some predictions. We said that there would be a voltage drop across that resistor of 5 volts. So why don't we measure that? So let's just get in there and check that. Okay, so, oh, that's not very good, is it? Let's just move that up. Uh, 4.68, so, yep, very close to it. So 4.68. And you might be wondering what the uh, voltage drop is across here. Now, do remember that I said earlier that the, you've got the dropout voltage, or I think I mentioned the dropout voltage on the voltage regulator it needs to be at least two volts. So the supply side, supply side always should be at least um, for uh, a voltage regulator circuit, at least um, two volts greater than the output. So um, what's it going to be in this particular case? Well, uh, notice that I've used two white LEDs. Now, I don't know what the voltage drop on these is. So let's just hover over here. So that's 3.21 volts. So I'm therefore thinking that the next one up will be uh, 6.4 volts. So 6.42 volts. OK, so we've got 6.42 volts and then we've got 4.68 volts dropped across here. And then, so, um, let's just see if I can uh, get this up. Okay, so what do we say? We said, uh, let's just hover over there. I'm going to have to hover over it like that. So 6.42 volts. 6.42 volts. And then we're going to add to this uh, 4.68. 4.68, okay. That gives us... 11.1 uh, volts and we've got the supply of 15 so uh, we will have uh, 3.9 volts or in other words uh, 15 minus the, our previous answer 3.9 volts dropped across the voltage regulator that's going to be VD the dropout voltage so oh, sorry about that let's just knock my webcam um, so let's just uh, copy that and we just double check that the uh, our prediction is true and 3.9 volts okay so that is uh, what we said so 3.9 volts now if we had uh, fewer volts dropped here so let's get rid of uh, one of those LEDs remember we're still going to have um, 100 milliamps flow and we just prove that we, uh, yeah, we still got well 94.62 milliamps. Okay, what we had before, um, but now because we've only got um, 3.2 volts dropped across that LED, we've now got to drop the uh, greater voltage across there. Okay, so that's now risen to 7.11. Things to bear in mind uh, when using this circuit is that if you've got quite a difference in the uh, input voltage. To the output, um, in other words, like here, 7.11 volts, you're going to have uh, power dissipated across this. And so uh, to calculate power, let's just uh, drag this back in. So power equals VI. So in this particular case, what do we say? 7.1 volts. Let's just call it 7 volts. Okay. Now let's call it 7.11 volts. Okay, because that's what it is. And then we say the current 
Uh, let's just go back here. Now this current, uh, which should be the same as the output current because we have conservation of the current. So uh, uh, 94.63. 94.62, like very, very close. Uh, so um, 94 uh, milliamps. So that was 7.11 volts times 94 milliamps. And then so uh, let's do a quick calculation. Remember, we're calculating power. Power is measured in watts. So uh, 7.11, 7.11 volts times uh, 94 times uh, 10 to the times 10 to the minus 3. If you don't like to do it like that, by the way, uh, you could if you want to do 0 0.094 because that's the same thing for 94 milliamps, and that will give us 0 0.66, 0 0.66834. Okay, well, uh, probably. Uh, it would be good enough just to say uh, 0.7 watts. Okay, now 0.7 watts of power is actually uh, a reasonable amount of power that's going to be dissipated through here, and so you would need a heat, a heat sink attached to it. So you need to uh, bulk it down. Probably, if you're one of my students, to a bit of aluminium that we've got in the workshop. Uh, one of these LEDs, 300 milliamps, then you shouldn't have too much of a problem. So shall we do a calculation for one of those LEDs? We'll do some sort of predictions and things, shall we? Uh, so that was those were the figures, in fact. So we keep that, keep that there. So let's just quickly draw the circuit. So we're going to have a supply. We're not too sure what the supply is at the moment. Um, come to that in. Just a moment. Okay, we've got the regulator, we've got the input, we've got the output, we've got the uh, reference, and we're going to have that uh, resistor. Um, let's still stick with the L7805. There are other regulators we could use. Uh, you generally want to have the lowest value, um, like 5 volts. Uh, that we've got in the workshop. We've also got some L317 regulators, which will have a difference between reference and output of 1.25 volts. So actually, in some ways, it's better. Um, okay, so we know, or we can predict that that is going to be, do you remember? That's going to be 5 volts. And uh, we then have the LED and we said that the LED is going to have a forward uh, forward current of 300 milliamps so that's going to be 300 milliamps and we know that's 5 volts so let's calculate that resistance so R equals V over I uh, 5 uh, 300 milliamps, so 300 times 10 to the minus 3, if you want to write it that way. Um, so, shall we get the calculator up? And so, um, what have we got? 5 over 300 times 10 to the minus 3 gives us uh, 16.66 through there. Okay, 16.6 recurring ohms. Okay, now of course you wouldn't actually have that value. Okay, um, but well, yeah. Let's just let's just for the moment, for the sake of simplicity, say 16 ohms. Oh, another thing which we haven't considered yet actually is the power dissipation in this resistor. We had better check that because now we are using a higher powered LED. This LED has a forward voltage of 3.4, so 3.4 are dropped across here. Worst case, remember, 3.4. So if that's 3.4, and then you add on 5 volts, so 8.4, uh, then say at least 2 volts, so 10.4, so the supply needs to be at least 10.4. Well, let's just make it at 12 volt supply, and we should be okay there.
let's change the LED for well it's already white actually for that matter and we said 16 ohms and uh, we change that to 12 volts let's run the simulation uh, 290 milliamps that's very close remember we did a little bit of rounding on the resistor value as well so I'm quite happy with that um, bearing in mind that 300 was probably the maximum that we wanted if say that that current was over just over uh, 300 milliamps and you would probably want to adjust your resistor accordingly because you want to have no more than 300 milliamps and like I think I mentioned earlier in the video that you don't actually have to have 300 milliamps you might want to limit it to say um, 150 milliamps for example now one thing um, that we need to uh, we do need to consider is the rating of this resistor that's going to be important in fact also we need to work out the uh, watts that are going to be uh, dissipated the power that's going to be dissipated through this as well to work out whether we need a sizable heat sink or not well to calculate the um, power here we've got a choice some way so power equals vi so we could use that because we know the voltage which is 5 volts uh, we know the current which is 300 milliamps uh, if you wanted you could say power equals uh, i squared r you could use that formula uh, because we know the current so we could square that current and multiply it by the uh, resistance so whichever way you want to do it so let's just nudge that over let's just do a quick calculation so the power that's going to be dissipated by the resistor which by the way is generally you know when we're using LEDs like that we tend to generally not need to do it unless the supply voltage is quite high uh, let's, let's, let's use this one then so volts so 5 volts so 5 and then multiply that by about 300 milliamps which gives us 1.5 watts okay so that calculation was the voltage 5 volts times uh, 300 times 10 to the minus 3 which gives us uh, 1.5 watts of power in that resistor now that is a problem because if you use resistors like this these ones these small ones uh, which is the sort that we mostly use in the classroom they're quarter watt resistors that's, that's the maximum uh, they can get very hot if you had a quarter of watt run through them you don't want to do that you probably um, halve that uh, just to be on the safe side so an eighth of the watt so if we're using uh, or if we're dissipating one and a half watts of power then you need something a little bit more chunky so let me just have a quick look see what I've got here so I don't know what that is um, because it just comes from my junk drawer but I'm well, I don't know maybe it's a three watt resistor I'm not sure okay it might be less uh, they're probably something like five watts I'm guessing but you can get like 10 watt 20 watt resistors if you want so in this particular case I think if I know that the power that is going to be one and a half watts that's dissipated through this resistor then I would make sure that my resistor is rated for at least three watts okay five watts wouldn't hurt ten watts actually wouldn't hurt it's just going to make it a physically larger resistor the other thing that you would need to do as well uh, if we knew the voltage drop across there and we knew the voltage drop across there add those two together subtract them from the supply and then you know the voltage drop across here between the input and the output multiply that voltage drop by the current and then you'll have the power that's going to be dissipated by that okay one final thing that i would like to say is uh, that thus far we've used the l7805 uh, there is a better choice that you might like to have a look at the l 317 adjustable voltage regulator it's got the same in reference or in ground output uh, but the it tries to maintain a difference between the output and the reference of 1.25 volts if i remember 
So um, all the calculations, everything stays the same, it, 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 except um, that this voltage here is going to be 1.25 volts rather than 5 volts. And that's actually that's beneficial uh, because then you're going to have less power dissipated uh, through that. Okay, that's it. Thank you.